So one of the things we introduced in the last video was this idea of an A star pathfinding algorithm that allows us to sort of, again, think about that idea of where we came from, but more importantly, utilizing something known as a heuristic to, again, make that assessment of how much further do I have to go? And that's actually something that we're going to be taking at least a little bit of a look at because it starts to motivate a lot of the different algorithms that we use when we're trying to do searches and problem solving. And so to even kind of present that, I'm going to switch up sort of a, the problem, uh, if you will, instead of it being just find a dot, you know, find a spot and find some kind of goal. And then how do I, you know, traverse that goal or that path to that goal? Instead, let's take a look at something known as the sliding puzzle problem. And the entire idea, at least for the, the graphic, is I have an eight puzzle uh, puzzle. These little sliding things that, you know, when we were kids, we used to just sort of get in knickknacks and party bags. And the entire idea is I might have some random assortment of my numbers. For example, my one may be on the bottom right. And the goal of the puzzle is to slide tiles into that empty space. So for example, the three moves into here, for example, creating a new open slot, and then I could slide the one into here and continue to do this until I reach a goal situation where, again, the numbers are in numerical order from left to right. And you can see, again, I'm just asking what moves do I need to make from sort of the initial state to get to there. Now, when we think about the sliding puzzle problem, any one puzzle uh, typically takes, roughly speaking, about 22 moves. So it would take, roughly speaking, 22 moves to get to our goal state. And just to keep a little bit of the vocabulary that we've seen throughout the, the, the lecture so far, we do kind of think about it as having a branching factor of about a three. And what we're talking about there is specifically, again, uh, how many moves in one step. How many possible moves? Because again, if we think about that, well, if I have my blank tile in the very center, then I have four positions that could potentially fill that in. So that, in essence, is four moves but that's just for that center piece. If I'm looking at, say, my corner piece, well, it only gets to be able to do two moves. And finally, if we're looking at sort of this edge piece, uh, it has a three move. And so, you know, just for our sake, just to make it easier, we're doing some super quick, uh, you know, averaging going on there, you know, a four plus a two equals six, plus a three equals nine, 3 divided by 9 turns into 3. So we're just arbitrarily saying, uh, you know, roughly speaking, the puzzle, the sliding puzzle problem has a branching factor of 3. Okay, fine. But again, if we're starting to look at this from that same kind of perspective, one of the things that we're dealing with is, again, just working through a searching problem, where whichever candidate we're looking at, we're simply saying, all right, well, <clears throat> am I at my goal condition? And so again, you can see we can start to structure this very similar to how we worked off of the A star problem when it was just off of sort of airports and you know, nodes in a graph. But the problem is, you know, if we're making just one transition, one step, it's easy for us to establish what the G value can be. All right, I'm moving only one tile. I can only do one slide. But what about that H and specifically, you know, how much further do I have to go, right? Again, I want my uh, puzzle pieces to look like this, seven, eight. I want them to look like this. And that's a little harder for us to uh, assess rather than a straight line or Manhattan distance. It's not as easy. So what kind of heuristics can we work off of? And so to kind of realize this, you know, one of the reasons that we would want to do this is, you know, if we're looking at this from just a brute force, breadth first search kind of look, we're generating so many possible conditions that it's very difficult for us to work off of. Again, look at how many pieces there are. You can see, you know, that's a branching factor to a depth 
equal to 3 to the 22nd 20 seconds power it's a lot 20 seconds whatever either way i'm going to present to you instead two potential heuristics that we can look at just to evaluate this problem and hopefully get there again the big focal point for a heuristic right is to not over estimate and we'll see that a little bit more a little bit but that's the big goal we don't want to overstep our bounds. So again, if we're looking at it, the first heuristic I'm going to present to you is something I'm going to call H1. And H1 is just going to say, well, look at whatever your state currently is in. So here and count how many of your tiles are in the wrong spot. Again, we know what our goal condition should look like. So my heuristic is going to be, well, how many of those are just wrong? Well, uh, the two's in the wrong spot, four, six, all of them are in the wrong spot. So we would generate a heuristic of an eight. And in that kind of sense, you know, oh, well, you know, my heuristic for when I'm in the goal condition would be a zero because none of them are in the wrong spot. And if we're thinking about this from sort of this path stepping down motion, what we're essentially asking with our H here is for each one of those potential steps, uh, how many tiles are in the wrong place? Now, once again, you know, if we're looking at this, they're all still going to be roughly speaking in the wrong place, and so eight. But again, if we're working towards a gradual move to zero, oh, this is starting to influence our decisions. But that's just H1. I said I'm going to show you two of them. Now, H2 is actually going to say, let's utilize that Manhattan distance. We've shown it, so let's take a look at it and say, all right, well, for each one of my pieces, for, say, for example, seven, what's the Manhattan distance from where it currently is to where it needs to be? So it needs to be right here. So it would need one, two, three potential moves for that. And now you notice that second part, looking at each goal state or each one of the tiles in the goal state. And so if you were to take all of those up and add them together, so we just talked about that seven, it would take three moves. Well, if we then took a look at the two, the two only needs to do one move, or there's two. Uh, if we were to look at the four, the four needs to go one, two, four. Uh, next one, five, needs to just go to five etc etc because again if we're looking at this we're just generating out some arbitrary number and this is just me walking through a few of those different uh steps to kind of show you where those numbers are all coming from so what we can do with this is again we can translate this into the a star problem as i start to look at this sort of approach again i have sort of a starting point i'll call this s0 and that s0 has some branches that it can work off of. Now we're dealing with an edge, so it only has three potential moves. Uh, we could slide the five down, we could move the four across, or we could take the eight up. Well, with each one of those, uh, again, the G's for them would all be one, right? Now, if we're looking at it again from that perspective of using one of those heuristics, well, if I moved down my five, right? H1, that heuristic would be only two of them are out of place because five's in the right spot. If I looked at the Manhattan distance, all right, well, we move the five down. So again, that's a zero. Two needs to move one over. One needs to move one over. So we'd still get that two spot. But what I'm sort of going at here is that would be sort of the decision for that first step. If we're looking at the four moving across, right? So this was moving five down, moving four across, H1. Well, now we've got one, two, three, four, four moves in the wrong spot. And then for the H2, Again, we'd need to count out how many there need to be moved over. The one would need to be moved over. The two needs to be over, so that's two. Five needs to be moved over, and four needs to be moved over. So again, we can see that that particular move would have 
a plus h of 4. And then finally, if we moved the 8 up and the 2, let's see. Uh, again, those are still all in the wrong spot. That one gets in the wrong spot. I would believe off the top of my head both of those would still be 4. You know, that's, that's sort of where we would go. There we are. But again, if we're starting to look at this again, treating this like it's the A star problem, well, we still got that G, we still see that that's a one, we still see that H, and we have our two potential, or our three potential moves to work off of that meant to be a four. There we are. So one, one, and one, three, five, and five. Since we're dealing with a priority Q in the A star, we see which one would be our next consideration, and we would just start to expand it out as well. And we'd continue to move through that. 